Hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study on the book of First Enoch. Now, I have placed the link in the description box below if you'd like to follow along with us. So if you have that open in your Bibles, First Enoch chapter 80. And in those days, the angel Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have shown thee everything, Enoch, and I have revealed everything to thee that thou shouldest see this sun and this moon and the leaders of the stars of heaven and all those who turn them, their tasks and times and departures. And in the days of the sinners, the years shall be shortened. We are told in Matthew chapter 24, verse 22 by Jesus, where he says, And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And so again, verse 2 says, In the days of the sinners, the years shall be shortened, and their seed shall be tardy on their lands and fields. And all things on the earth shall alter and shall not appear in their time, and the rain shall be kept back, and the heavens shall withhold it. And in those times the fruits of the earth shall be backward, and shall not grow in their time, and the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time, and the moon shall alter her order, and not appear at her time. Now what Enoch is talking about here is exactly what's described to us in Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter 21 and Mark chapter 13. These are the events that will take place not only at the end times, but specifically in the time of the tribulation period, the seven years as described in the Bible. Goes on in verse five and says, in those days, the sun shall be seen and he shall journey in the evening on the extremity of the great chariot in the west and shall shine more brightly than accords with the order of light. And many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order prescribed. And these shall alter their orbits and tasks, and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them. And the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners. And the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them. And they shall be altered from all their ways. Yea, they shall err and take them to be gods." and evil shall be multiplied upon them, and punishment shall come upon them so as to destroy all. This seems to be describing the rise of the Antichrist. When it says, for instance, the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them, they shall be altered from all their ways, yea, they shall err and take them to be gods. We know that the Antichrist is going to be a worldwide leader and he's going to be a dictator unlike the world has ever seen. If you don't do exactly what he says, you'll be killed, eliminated. And so you won't be able to think for yourself. You will do exactly as you're told. And that's what this seems to be referring to. Chapter 81, and he said unto me, observe Enoch, these heavenly tablets and read what is written thereon and mark every individual fact. And I observed the heavenly tablets and read everything which was written thereon and understood everything and read the book of all the deeds of mankind and of all the children of flesh that shall be upon the earth to the remotest generations. And forthwith, I bless the great Lord, the King of glory forever in that he has made all the works of the world. And I extolled the Lord because of his patience and blessed him because of the children of men. And after that, I said, blessed is the man who dies in righteousness and goodness concerning whom there is no book of unrighteousness written and against whom no day of judgment shall be found. And those seven holy ones brought me and placed me on the earth before the door of my house. And they said to me, declare everything to thy son, Methuselah, and show to all thy children that no flesh is righteous in the sight of the Lord, for he is their creator. One year we will leave thee with thy son, till thou givest thy last commands, that thou mayest teach thy children and record it for them. 
and testify to all thy children. And in the second year, they shall take thee from their midst. Do you remember in Genesis chapter 5, it speaks very specifically of Enoch walking with God and he was no more? Well, from this text, it doesn't seem that that came as a surprise to Enoch. He had plenty of time to prepare his family and friends for what was to come, which was him leaving the earth and going to be with God. It says in verse 7, Don't be dismayed by this, Enoch. Let thy heart be strong, for the good shall announce righteousness to the good. The righteous with the righteous shall rejoice and shall offer congratulation to one another. But the sinners, they shall die with the sinners, and the apostate shall go down with the apostate, and those who practice righteousness shall die on account of the deeds of men, and they shall be taken away on account of the doings of the godless. And in those days they ceased to speak to me, and I came to my people, blessing the Lord of the world. So it seems like the audience that Enoch had with these angels they have departed him. They're going to return in two years to take him to be with God, but they've left him to spend time with his family and friends, and not just to spend time with them, but to teach them all that he has been told, so that as we are told in verse 7, the good shall announce righteousness to the good. In other words, Enoch, take what we have told you and pass it on. Let this not be forgotten. Let this not be hidden. Let this remain among thy people forever and all time. And if they heed thy word, they will die along with the righteous. But if they don't heed thy word, they will go down with the apostate. Chapter 82. And now, my son Methuselah, all these things I am recounting to thee. So Enoch is doing exactly what the angels told him to do. He's passing these on to his son Methuselah. He says, I'm recounting thee and writing these things down for thee, and I have revealed to thee everything. I have not withheld anything, Enoch says, and I've given thee books concerning all of these. Notice that he says books. Enoch wasn't able to write this all down in one single book. There was so much that he learned that it took many books to contain the information. And so he says to Methuselah, Preserve, my son Methuselah, the books from thy father's hand, and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world. I have given wisdom to thee, and to thy children, and thy children that shall be to thee, that they may give it to their children for generations, this wisdom, namely, that passes their thought. And those who understand it shall not sleep, but they shall listen with the ear that they may learn this wisdom, and it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food. Now let me just say right here, there are three books in the books of Enoch. Only the first book is recognized by scholars and theologians as a biblical text. Not meaning that it's scripture, but it's sound with scripture. The other two seem to err to scripture. But when Enoch says many books here, the book that we are reading, First Enoch, is broken into five sections or many books. We've discussed those sections, the book of watchers, the book of parables, the astronomical book, which we're in right now, the book of dreams and visions, and then Enoch's actual epistle. And so I just want to ask, could it be Enoch referring to the five sections of these books that comprise First Enoch? so that we don't jump to the conclusion that he's talking about book two and book three. Because if they err with the Bible, then we should avoid them because the Bible is our measuring stick, not the book of Enoch. We're not looking for the Bible to conform to the book of Enoch. We're looking for the book of Enoch to conform to the Bible. And thus far in our study, that's exactly what we've seen. Well, let's continue in verse four of chapter 82. Blessed are all the righteous Blessed are all those who walk in the way of righteousness and sin not as the sinners. In other words, blessed are those who live differently than the people around them. He says, in the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heaven, entering in and departing from the portals for 30 days with the heads of thousands of the order of the stars, together with the four which are intercalated, which divide the four portions of the year, which lead them and enter them with four days. 
Owing to them, men shall be at fault and not reckon them in the whole reckoning of the year. Yea, men shall be at fault and not recognize them accurately. Now, Enoch has told us so far that there are 364 days in the year. But if we have patterned our calendar after 365 days, have we not made the days shorter by doing so? And so it seems to me that Enoch is saying here, men will change the days of years. They will not recognize them accurately, for they belong to the reckoning of the year and are truly recorded thereon forever. One in the first portal, one in the third, one in the fourth, one in the sixth. And the year is completed in 364 days. So if you recognize the book of First Enoch as a book from God, the Most High, Yahweh himself, he has patterned the years to be 364 days each. Yet man has changed it to 365 days, like I said, thereby making the days shorter. And the account thereof is accurate, and the recorded reckoning thereof exact. For the luminaries, and months, and festivals, and years, and days has Uriel shown and revealed to me, to whom the Lord of the whole creation of the world has subjected the host of heaven. And he has power over night and day in the heaven to cause the light to give light to men, sun, moon, and stars, and all the powers of the heaven which revolve in their circular chariots. Verse 9, these are the orders of the stars which set in their places and in their seasons and festivals and months. And these are the names of those who lead them, who watch that they enter at their times, in their orders, in their seasons, in their months, in their periods of dominion, and in their positions. There are four leaders who divide the four parts of the year enter first, and after them the twelve leaders of the orders who divide the months and for the 360 days that are heads over thousands who divide the days, and for the four intercalary days, there are the leaders which sunder the four parts of the year. Huh, the four parts of the year, could that be talking about winter, spring, fall, and summer? And these heads over thousands are intercalated between leader and leader, each behind a station, but their leaders make the division. And these are the names of the leaders who divide the four parts of the year which are ordained. Mikael, Helimelech, Melajal, and Norel. And the names of those who lead them, Adnorel, and Ejoshuel, and Elomel. These three follow the leaders of the orders. And there is one that follows the three leaders of the orders which follow those leaders of stations that divide the four parts of the year. In the beginning of the year, Mechagel rises first and rules, who is named Tamayani and son. And all the days of his dominion while he bears rule are 91 days. And these are the signs of the days which are to be seen on earth in the days of his dominion. Sweat and heat and calms and all the trees bear fruit and leaves are produced on all the trees and the harvest of wheat, and the rose flowers, and all the flowers which come forth in the field. But the trees of the winter season become withered. So it seems like this angel is over summer. Verse 17, And these are the names of the leaders which are under them, Berkael, Zalebsel, and another who is added ahead of a thousand, called Hilajosph. And the days of the dominion of this leader are at an end. The next leader after him is Hel Emelech, whom one names the shining sun, and all the days of his light are 91 days. And these are the signs of his days on the earth, glowing heat and dryness, and the trees ripen their fruits and produce all their fruits ripe and ready, and the sheep pair and become pregnant, and all the fruits of the earth are gathered in, and everything that is in the fields and the wine press. These things take place in the days of his dominion. Could this be fall? I understand it says glowing heat and dryness, but if you live in the south, some of the driest months in the south, some of the hottest months in the south are in the months of August and September. He says in verse 20, These are the names and the orders and the leaders of those heads of thousands, Gilajajel, Kiel, and Hiel. And the name of the head of a thousand, which is added to them, Asphael, and the days of his dominion are at an end.
And that is also going to bring for us today an end. We'll pick up next time in chapter 83, which is going to begin the dreams and vision section of the book of First Enoch. Well, as we leave one another today, friends, I just want to truly wish you blessing in your journey with the Lord Jesus as you walk before him day to day. And I pray that you're spending time in the word of God, but I also trust that you're being blessed by this study that we're doing through the book of First Enoch and that in many ways it is challenging you in your walk as well. So on that note, I will leave you in his hands with his blessings and favor. And until we meet again, friends, and as he wills, I'll see you on the next video.